Ryan is um, my youngest son. Uh, he was 19 when he died. He was at university. Um, he was quite a quiet lad, but um, loved socialising, loved being his friends, his, with his friends. His friends, to him and his family, were his life. He was not really interested in anything much else apart from football. When Ryan was at university, every, we all missed him, but um, especially his brothers and sisters. Um, he was really close to Danny, um, my eldest son. They were like best friends rather than just being brothers. They never fought. He was really looking forward to going back to university in um, January. We had um, a 21st, my daughter's 21st birthday planned for that weekend. Um, when Ryan had come home at Christmas, he'd felt a little bit unwell, but only um, um, sort of busy living at, at university, tiredness. He, he'd been working hard, he'd uh, been playing hard, he'd been clubbing, partying, and, and, and all the stuff that goes with being a student. He had to go back to university at the beginning of January just for two lectures, but then he was able to come home again. Um, but when he went back for this lecture... Um, he went back on the Wednesday and the lecture was on the Thursday. The Friday morning, um, I had two police ladies walk up the garden path and I knew something was wrong and they came and told me they'd found Ryan um, um, dead um, in his bed. That his friends had found him. He hadn't turned up for a lecture and he'd been found with a rash all over his body. Immediately, I knew it was meningitis. Obviously, I needed to know more why, you know, had, why hadn't anyone recognised it? Why, you know, why hadn't he rung me? Why, you know, why hadn't anybody done anything about it? But since, you know, since, since his death, I found out that he didn't feel too well. So he was going to go back down and, and go back to his room and, and have a sleep and then see how he was in the morning. He was then um, sick. Somebody heard him being being sick, but um, shouted through, are you all right, Ryan? And he just said, yeah, that's fine, probably a dodgy burger, something like that. He tucked himself up in bed and he never woke up the next morning. So um, there were no obvious signs and and he was happy he was healthy and and that's really all I can say that you know there was nothing that we could have done when the um, police ladies told me that Ryan had a rash and and um, when I said I you know I recognized it as as being meningitis um, because 21 years ago I lost um, another son and he was um, seven weeks old, the twin to my daughter, and he had he died of meningitis too. He'd only just come out of um, a special care baby unit. He'd been in hospital for um, six, five or six weeks. Um, he'd had a, a, a few problems with um, his esophagus, but everything was, was, was fine. So one morning I went in and, and, and he was kind of crying, a, a very sh quiet cry. And I picked him up and it was almost like when I picked him up, he didn't want to be picked up. It, it hurt him. He didn't seem happy at all, just, just really uncomfortable. So I rang the hospital and they um, said, bring him straight in yourself, bring, bring him in because they thought it was something to do with his operation. Um, and then it was almost like he just took a, a massive deep breath. And then I knew instantly there was something not right, so I rang an ambulance. Paramedics came. So I went to the hospital and we were told that um, if we wanted to have Joe christened at that point, then we could. And um, half an hour later, he died. The children have been um, tested there is no link, um, um, for want of a better word, it's bad luck. I tend to think Ryan you know, was more susceptible. He 
he was a student, he was with people constantly, you know, it's... He was at that age where they're more vulnerable. He he was tired, maybe his, he was, his immune system wasn't as, as good as it should have been. Um, with, with Joe, uh, could have been because, again, he was, he was weakened from, from um, having an operation. It, it just proves it, it can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, or where you live. It, it, it is just, just a horrible, horrible disease. The way we're getting through this is through support, through um, family. We, I say we are a close family. Friends, all Ryan's friends, have just been absolutely fantastic. And obviously most of those are students. They're all the same age. You know, they know it can happen to them and, and their friends again. Um, they've been really good with the um, fundraising. We've been doing lots of fundraising. We've, we've done a football match at Carrow Road. We've had dance shows. We've had cake sales. We were just to raise some money to to help with the research um, for the Meningitis Research Foundation and to promote awareness. And for me, the awareness is a major part of all the fundraising. Um, yes, the money's great. Of course, that we need to get the money, but if if we can just tell as many people as we can about the symptoms, what to look out for, what to do, you know. And if we could just save one person's life, it's all been worth it. This is keeping us going and, and you know, on our darkest days, we do just think, right, come on, we've got to do this for Ryan and Joe. We've raised, um, since January, over £25,000 and, and I know... The children are like, we're just going to keep going and going and going. Um, sometimes I think, you know, a rest would be nice from it, you know, but um, I can see their passion to do it and, and I'll be there for them as they are for me.